after another mailbag video. Now I've got some things to review. This is definitely a review item. I'm not sure about the other stuff, I guess we'll find out. We'll do this first. Make sure you like and subscribe and click the bell icon and that sort of stuff. Have a chat down below in the comments too, give us your feedback down there. Opinions, suggestions, that kind of thing. Let's see if this can cut through cardboard, shall we? Hmm. Apparently you can. This is supposedly a Pomona cable. Well, a couple of Pomona cables, quite short ones. Now, what I'm a little suspicious about though, because I purchased these obviously, you know, thinking that the Pomona, the Martyrs Pomona, but are they really Pomona? The reason I'm saying this is because this is a Pomona cable, right? Martyrs Pomona on the plugs. Just here, it says Pomona. This is my original cable. Look at the quality on that. And this is what's just arrived. Plug is different. It still says Pomona on there, but it's different. If I stack them, different colour, different style plug. Is it just because it's a newer tool? Maybe. I mean, it may be absolutely fine. Just maybe a little bit suspicious that you know it's a little bit different. Hmm. Anyway, it may be fine. The other thing has got this flashing here on the on the flex. See this flash here where it's been moulded, or possibly pinched by the mould when it's been shut. You know, that's also a little bit suspicious just here. You know, having that. What does the wire itself say? Wire says Pomona Electronics 2B18, which is the item number which it's sold as. And my other cable here says Belden. So this is using a Belden cable, this is using a Pomona cable. Have they just marked that as a Pomona cable? to make it seem more legitimate. I don't know. These have got brand new in packaging. These haven't come in the packaging. Right? These came in Pomona bags. These have not. Makes me a little suspicious that they're fake. Anyway, um, yeah, so I've got two short ones. So what I might do actually is just um, hook these up and just check the resistances of the cables and see if there's anything obviously dodgy about them. But the quality doesn't seem quite right. I'm just suspecting these are fakes. Hmm. Well, I've just plugged it into my signal multimeter and it's showing a really good resistance, so it's basically saying zero. Um, I don't know. They're probably fine. I mean, I, I'm probably just being a bit fussy about it, but yeah, suspicious. I mean, one of the things I didn't actually notice when I purchased these, which is a bit of a mistake, it's my own fault, I didn't notice there's actually no guard cables on these. Right, they're not guarded cables. They probably are shielded, but there's no guard wires, so you can't actually use guarding because it doesn't have it. Whereas my other cable I've got does have a guard wire. I didn't notice that straight away. After I purchased it, I looked and thought, ah, there's no guard wire on that. Anyway, it's too late. So at least I've got some interconnect cables, which are probably fine, nice and short, you know, help to keep things down. So you don't always need guards, and sometimes it's a bit of a pain anyway. So, yeah. They'll probably do the way for doing some calibration work, but we'll see. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. Uh, anyone that helps to support the channel is really appreciated. Even just commenting and giving a thumbs up, that's supporting the channel. So if you just do that, I'll be happy. Financial support certainly helps because it means I can buy things from Mailbag and best test gear to fix, which keeps everyone entertained. Okay. It's an RF power amp, apparently. I did buy a couple of these things. Now, what was I looking at with this? I'm just trying to remember. 1 to 1 gigahertz, 2.5 watts. This is so long ago now, I'm trying to remember what I was going to do it for. VCC through that diode there, interestingly. I don't know what I was going to do with these now. Hmm. Oh, I know what it was. I was going to use these for doing calibration work, so my RF signal generators can't produce enough power to do a decent level for calibrating a power meter. So what I was going to do is I was going to boost it up with this or this or some other one like it. I was going to give this one a go first and this can do two and a half watts apparently and I need two watts at least I think it was for the calibration. So um, it might be one watt. The highest I can do 
is 13 dBm, which is 20 milliwatts. All right, so that's my highest level I can do at my signal generators. I think it's the highest I can do anyway. It wasn't much for them. Maybe 20, I might be able to do 20 at the most out of something. That's 100 milliwatts. So that's very short of what this can do. And for trying to do calibration work, um, sometimes you just need a bit more power. And so I thought I'd get one of these. I can always um, do it like as, as a transfer standard kind of thing, you know. So this could generate the frequency I need. Make sure as I've calibrated on a certain piece of gear, which I know is correct, so I know what it actually is supposed to be. Then transfer that over to the thing I'm trying to set up. Remember rightly, it's a Marconi power meter because I had no way of actually calibrating that without using like a radio or something to transmit into it. But I wanted to have more control, and so I thought I'll get one of these. So let's open up and have a look inside. It won't take long. Let's have a look inside it and see what's in. It's probably not that exciting. It's probably like an MMIC or something like in there. Okay, so there's that, the wire on the end, and that is just attached to the base plate. That's a solid extrusion, so I can't just take the bottom piece out. Not much to it. Then pretty much, yeah, MMIC by the looks of it. Okay, well, that's not much to see really, is it? The soldering looks okay. Let's put it back together. Don't get my merch too. I've got this. Interested in merch? I've got a few things up there. Was it Magic Smoke Restuffer? Um, I like small bombs and I do not lie. And. I've got a couple of other things. It's always the capacitor. Oh, sorry. Always the capacitor. I've got that on there as well. Got some shirts for that. It's always a capacitor, which I think is pretty appropriate for me because often it is a capacitor. It's a manual inside a box, which is a bit small for it. Probably doesn't mind matter. It's just now it's a slightly more interesting shape. Bit of a shame. It'll probably come right anyway. Probably sort myself out. Ah, oh, look at this. So this is the book for the. Calibration servicing log handbook for the 1061-1061A. Now I've got a well, I've got two 1062s, but they're basically the same unit. Right, they're basically the same. I was looking for a calibration book, an actual physical copy of the book for the 1062, and I saw these. And I thought, well, they're basically the same thing. So let's just get this one. And it's actually looks like it's in reasonable condition actually, apart from being misshapen now. Maybe I thought I'd get this because it's probably got decent diagrams in it. I had it all in the middle. Yeah, that's really nice. Because I've got an electronic copy of the 1062 manual stuff. The scans aren't wonderful in some of those pages. These are really nice. That's much nicer. Brilliant. This is why I like having a physical manual. Because sometimes you have something on a page, it's just a bit hard to read on a screen. And relying on the quality of the scan, that sort of stuff. So some stuff you can get scanned and it's, it's really good. Really good manuals, you know, electronic manuals and get really nice ones. But sometimes they're not so great. But, you know, you've got one at least. So I've actually done no repairs on the Datrons using the electronic manuals, but I still like to get a physical copy. So um, I'm not sure what the differences are exactly between the 1061, the 1061A and the 1062. I think the 1062 is basically a 1061A with the options by default or something like that. that's what I saw mentioned on the EV blog for anyway. That's something I've got. In the previous mailbag these are little clips. These are little plastic clips which hold the circuit boards in. So that's what I showed in the previous mailbag is these little clips. Hopefully the right size. Anyway, we'll guess we'll find out. I haven't tried them yet. And of course one of the other questions will be that is this gonna have stuff in it which my electronic versions don't have in? I don't know. Uh, I'm just trying to sort of glance through it, see if I can see anything obvious. What's this one? That's the AC, AC preamp section. Because I'm not sure that I've got a really good result on this Dantron 1062 I'm using now. Well, we're playing with now. Yeah, I'm just not sure if it's got good optocouplers in it or not. I think it's okay, but it's, it's just not 100% sure. I don't completely trust it. I'm just not sure about cover ranges. But yeah, that, that seems to be basically everything there. ACIMS section. Okay, so I don't know if there's anything extra in here. I have to go through page by page. The input section here. Yeah. So that's it all seems to be there. Really. So yeah, I really do like having a physical manual. You know, it's just not the same looking on the screen. A physical manual is nicer. You know, it's easier to read, easier to look at. But I need to check like the board numbers. I think they're all the same. I'm just not 100% sure. If anyone knows what the difference is between a 1061, 1061A and a 1062, please let me know. Also 1071, because I, um, 
107 and 1081 are both the 7.5 digit versions. The 1062 and 1061A are six and a half digits and the 1061 is five and a half digits. That much I do know. But I do know you can upgrade the 1061 to 1061A by changing the ROMs, well the EPROMs. You can put the 1061A EPROMs in and make it a six and a half digit. I wonder if it's actually possible to do the same thing going from a 1062 to a 1071. I'm guessing there's some differences on the boards or something like that. So yes, I've got a physical manual. Brilliant. It's not exactly the right one. Which year is this anyway? Um, 1982. So the electronic one I've got I think was 1986. That's why it includes a 1062 because I think they came out later. So I think basically it's the same thing. Actually, yeah, if you have a quick look at uh, parts listing. So I can find this really quickly. I'll come back. Yeah, so on the Dactron 1062 I'm fixing, I've got two of them. The LS101 and the original 1062, which I've been doing videos on already. I just think I've just about finished recording video number four, actually. M24, which is what I was missing out of that thing originally, is, is still listed as an FCD 880 in here, in this earlier version. So there's not much difference between the listing in this and the listing in the later manuals, basically the same, at least in that regard. Right, the big box. So this is an item for review. There'll be links down below for this at least. I've got to do a proper review video on this. So this is just me having a quick look. Just checking it out a little bit. And then, um, so make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon. That's what stuff you get notified when I do publish a video on this. It should be very soon. It might even be before this video comes out. It might be a bit confusing. I don't know. So it sent me a few things, not just one. But there's three things it sent me. This is quite in depth. I'm going to have to do a bit of digging on this. So as you can see, it's from Zero Plus. So I did a review on a Zero Plus Logic Analyzer oh, about two years ago now, probably. And I've got that in my other room. I'll probably link that down below for you to go and have a look at that too. That was really helpful. They were quite generous to give me that the first time around. And my channel was a lot smaller. And if I approached them because I saw this mentioned somewhere. And I approached them and said, hey, do you want to give me some more stuff? And they said, yeah. So what we've got here. Protocol Simulated Board 2. Protocol Simulated Board 1. I'm not quite sure what the details are of these. I haven't actually researched these. And then we've got the Logic Cube Pro. Probably very similar to the thing I got before, which is a, a Devon form factor. How many channels did that thing have? I think it had like 32 channels or 64 channels on it. Something ridiculous. It's huge. It's kind of bugging me. I can't think of what that thing's called. Really nice packaging. Look at this. Nice box. Cow sheet stuff. Just to prove it's all good. It's been tested. I'm just going to do this really quickly, I'm not going to do a proper review on this yet. So here it is. That's pretty small. That's a fraction of the size of the other one I've got. Lots of little clip leads. Little um, grabber clips. A bunch of those. Product warranty book. A whole bunch of cables to hook them up. A whole bunch more. And there's some other ones here. Looks like individual ones. And a USB 3 cable for connecting it up. A little pouch in here, what's near? Software, I'm guessing. Little flash drive. Okay, cool. Warranty card, don't even look at that. That looks pretty cool. But I'm only going to have a quick glance over it. I'm going to do a proper review later on. I'm going to do that right now. Let's get a little teaser. Here. Something you look at. So that looks very promising. That looks really nice. Thank you much. It's zero plus. I'm actually going to check out the links down below. So, protocol simulator board. I'm not sure what the story is with these. I did mention them. I just wasn't actually sure what they were. So one to this, this switch is got a switch there, USB power but looks like I'll switch over here. It's called switch three. It's called switch two. It's called switch four and switch one. And a whole bunch of header pins over here. I'm not gonna get the bag just yet. So this is a serial protocol simulator. So this is like is all the things it can support on this one. Is it also the second module? This looks very interesting. You're gonna simulate the bus signal outputting Command, data, and clock, and decode the signal with the LA or logic analyzer, which is what the other part is. And then the 100 buses are supported. Now I'm still growing. That's what ball one does. Obviously, ball two is going to be something similar, but a different set of protocols. And here is a USB cable. That's going to be interesting. Have a close look at that. We'll get the other one out. So, obviously, they're setting these to me, I think, to allow me to. 
test of the functionality of the logic analyzer so, you know generate all these different signals to play around with so it looks like the board is very similar basically the same board I think not much in it they're very similar and this has a whole bunch of different stuff on it there you go so what this one can do different set completely so I'm not quite sure what actually the outputs obviously it's simulating the protocols but uh, I'm not too sure what the outputs actually are comprised of is it like some preset data or is it something some data you can supply yourself I'm not sure I'm guessing it's some kind of preset data and here's the configuration I didn't show it on the other one did I but it would be the same sort of thing configuration switches to set up the actual protocols so the protocols down the left hand side here and there's the pin connections which tells you which connections to go on to so this is going to be very similar to the Siglent STB3 which I've got which I use sometimes when I'm doing scope reviews because it outputs some serial communications and this obviously just does a stack of stuff probably every protocol I could think of they build it into it very impressive and I was really impressed with the last unit the other Zero Plus I reviewed before I'll make sure I'll link, I'll link that in because that would be quite an interesting review well I think it is, it did quite a bit I probably barely scraped the surface of what it could do so thank you very much Zero Plus for sending those to me I'll get these reviews sorted out I might have to do a review on each unit I'm not sure I'm going to do this <laughs> I'm not sure what the retail prices of these are so I, I actually don't know what they are they just I just asked about some stuff and they said yeah sure we'll send you something so um, I've got no idea what they're worth no idea I'm sure they've got it on the website or maybe they've got some retail outlet or something you can use I should actually find that out and put it down below in the links and do something like that so at least you've got a reference and you actually know there's a web address there zeroplus.com.tw because they're in Taiwan watch out for the review I reckon it's going to be pretty interesting this is going to do it heaps it's like it's a very capable unit so this is on the back of the box I should really show you this to show you the different models they have available this particular unit now the one they've sent me is the 32256M which is looks like the higher spec one so it's got um, unfortunately I don't know the translations for these I don't have that you might have to guess so it's 8 channels or 1 gigabit um, 16 channels are 5 and 12 megabit or 32 channels are 256 megabit so depending on how much data you're coming in the speeds you can have more channels, so you can do up to 32 channels or down to 8 channels at the fastest rate obviously the gigabit speeds and stuff this is basically what it says here, the same thing 500 megahertz, 1 gigahertz or 2 gigahertz effective sample rates, that's what it looks like 250 megahertz, I'm guessing that's a processor speed plus or minus 6 volts I'm not quite sure what that's referencing 10 millivolt steps, some kind of option I'm not quite sure what that is Windows 10 8.17 so that's, yeah, that's good, covers a wide range uses 3 watts max and uh, only weighs 150 grams nice and here's an example of the software which is that looks basically the same as the software on the previous one I reviewed that looks identical actually from what I can remember so I will have to dig that out and actually make sure that I've got the, the PC set up and actually running the software and, and go through review on that because obviously standalone without the PC is pretty useless I need to actually have the PC set up and go through that so they sent me the best one last time too I'm very pleased very generous of them subscribe click the bell icon especially if you, wanna, if you wanna catch this Thumbs up, give us a thumbs up, always important, and I'll see you down in the chat. Catch you later. See you next video.